Now let's turn our focus to multinomial distribution. In the last section, we looked at binomial where there was only two possible outcomes. Now we're asking ourselves, well, what if there's more than two outcomes? How would I find the probability that something will happen then? I'll give a couple examples there. Five places to go on vacation, three responses to a survey. Right here is the formula. Please don't memorize that formula. I'll give it to you. If you look at this, the question is, what do those pieces mean in this very confusing formula? Well, n is your total number. So in this case, maybe you have five choices. x would be the number of times that you want each thing to occur. So let's go up to this idea here that you have five places to go on vacation. Well, let's say when you're setting up your vacation, we're talking to... 20 different people. And of the five locations, we want to know the probability that eight go to the first location, four go to the second location, five go to the third location, two to the fourth location, and one to that last location. This would be 20 broken down into the five possible vacation most areas. The P's over here, the P1, P sub 2, P sub 3, all they are is the probability. So this place where we want eight people to go, what's the probability that they're going to go there? Well, if the probability they go to that location is 0.43, well, then my P sub 1 would be 0.43. Let's look at our first example. I think it'll make more sense. First example, they give us the probability that people are going to choose all these things. We're looking at 12 people, so there's my n. There's three things they could do, movie, play, mall. Well, the number of people that we want to go to the play, the movie, and the shopping mall is given to us. So the probability of people that go to the movie is 0.5. And we want six people to go. We want four people to go to the play. And the probability of the play is 30%. Or 0.3. And then the last one, the mall, we want two people to go there. And that probability is 0.2. Now we're going to go to our formula, which we just had. So the formula says, take your n, and on the bottom, take all of your x's, take your probability of x1, 0.5, to the number that you want, you want six people probability of the second one, which is the play, and you want four people, the probability of the third thing, and you want two people. Put this on your calculator. My suggestion would be do this piece and get an answer, and if you put that in, you're going to end up with 13,860 and then multiply by this piece. That way, instead of having to worry about this, if you put this in in one shot, it will work, but the fear would be is that you don't put the parentheses in the right place, and your calculator does what you tell it to do, but you're telling it the incorrect order. Order of operations will mess you up in that case. Go ahead and try this problem. Pause the video here if you want. answer to this problem ends up being so the probability that if you select 12 people and you want 6 to go to the movie, 4 to the play and 2 to the shopping mall the probability that that will happen is 0 .070 another example here so we're looking at buying zero CDs, one CD, two or more CDs. So I'm actually going to draw a probability distribution. 
Maybe it's a little easier to see if there's a distribution on it. They might buy zero CDs, one CD, two or more CDs. Well, the probability that they buy one C zero CDs is 0.3. Probability they buy one CD is 0.6. Probability that they buy two or more is 0.1. If six customers enter the store, find the probability that one won't buy any CDs, three will buy one CD, and two will buy two or more CDs. Here's my X values. Here's my P values. I'm going to set this up. Six factorial over one factorial times three factorial times two factorial, all my X's. The probability of someone not buying any CDs, the number of people I want. The probability of buying one CD, the number of people I want. The probability of buying two or more CDs, the number of people I want. Again, I put this part in my calculator. You get 20. Multiply by the remaining part. If you pause the video for a second, figure all this out. The answer in this case would be 0 0.039. So what we're saying is, if these probabilities are accurate, the likelihood, the probability, that six customers will break into one for zero CDs, three for one CD, and two for two or more CDs is 0 0.039.